Hello, my name is Leanne Kruger. This is part one of Treasures and the Truth. Here's a little bit about me that wasn't in the biography. And these are the three organizations that I volunteer with. The objectives for this session, part one of three, is to talk about PowerPoint and add photos and text to the PowerPoints, add voice to describe, talk about converting that to PowerPoint shows and convert it to an MP4, which will prepare us for sections two and three. And all of this is involved and we're talking about because we're talking about treasures and the truth. We have family treasures that have been handed down from generation to generation. We love them. We don't have the heart to throw them out, but we don't have the room for them either. And sadly, our kids just don't want them or they don't have the room either. How do we keep the family history of the treasure without the treasure? And we want to do it in a way that the generations that are coming will take time to learn about them. So in August, I took these two briefcases full of slides and I scanned them in. Great, now what do I do with them? Scanning sometimes is the easy part. Um, it takes time, but it's not that hard. But organizing them in a way afterwards so that people can learn about some history and what family did, that takes a little bit more. And so where do these photos now go. And family heirlooms. We have them. We don't want them. Before we throw them out, we need to take pictures of them and tell their story in some way. Here's another example. My daughter's project. Before just throwing it away, because it had been in a room a few years, we needed to take a picture and we needed to document what she had done. So this is the documentation, and here's another photo of her project. It was a cultural school assignment. It was on Mexico. It needed to be a pinata. Unfortunately, there's no candy in there. <laughs> and the flowers she chose, so she chose the flag, and then the flowers are um, used to make medicines, she thought was important. It's made out of cardboard, paper, styrofoam, glue, and lots and lots of tissue paper. So now we have that recorded and she can remember it even though she doesn't have the project, but she can see it. Um, PowerPoint allows us to do that, to add pictures and document with it. So here's uh, some other items that we're going to I'm going to talk about. One is a rocking chair. So here's a slide. This says something a little bit more about this rocking chair that the kids know about. They've seen, but not know too much about it. So it's from Glasgow. A family member actually brought it to Canada, 1850. It's handmade and you can tell that by clicking on the, holding on the handles and you can see that they're not even as a manufactured rocking chair would be. And many children have rocked in it several generations. All right, before taking the picture, he was like, okay, do I do it with the cushion or without the cushion? And what do I use in the background? And where do I take the picture? And do you clean up the background? Do you stage it? Or do you just put it in a room that everybody remembers where it was? This is my grandmother's lamp. We called her Nanny. She had this lamp since at least 1947. My uncle remembers it. I remember it in the 60s. It was on the table in the den. My grandmother then moved from Ontario all the way over to British Columbia and she took the lamp with her and this table and chairs. And when you walked in, when we walked into her house every time, there was this lamp and chair as you walked in. It was in the entryway. And you know what? I never asked her why that lamp was important, where she got it, 
Uh, obviously she liked it, but you know, what's the history behind it? Or the table and chairs? No. So do you have an item in your family that you should ask somebody about the background history before you get rid of it or they get rid of it? So we're going to discuss now how to create uh, PowerPoint slides that allow us to document the photos with the information about them. And one way is to create a slide is just to have a title and then the photo underneath it. And we do that by clicking on the Home tab and the slide section is Layout and we click on Layout and it gives us the menu at the top there and hopefully I'm not covering up too much, nope. And then click on Title and Content. And this is what we can get. A nice title and a beautiful photo. And we know where it is, what it is, and the year. The problem is, who was there? Why were we there? What were we doing? Had we ever been there? Is there history behind it? Huge amount of history, yes. But that's not included in just having the title and the slide. So we're going to go back to the Home tab and in the slide section again, click on Layout. And this time, click on To Content. This one's in orange there at the top. Now I can put a title. And on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, I can put the photo. And the other side, I can document and add some comments. Now, this background here is very boring. This is my professional slide layout. Here's another one. And we'll just talk about how to get the different backgrounds, depending on what you want to use. But this still is the two content layout. All right, how do we add text? Well, there's two boxes. Click in the one you want the text to be in, right where it says click to add text. When you want to add the title, just click inside, click to add title. If you do not add anything, they will not appear on the slide. Now, you may or may not like the bullets, and it depends on what you're talking about as to whether you need bullets. If you don't, on the Home tab, in the Paragraph section, in the top left are some bullets, icon. Really easy to spot there. Click on it, they disappear. Click on it again, they come back. If you want numbers for some reason, like I'm using in my PowerPoints, to illustrate steps, specific items in a specific order, then the numbers is right beside the bullets. How do we add a photo now? Because that's the most important part. Inside the box are six little icons in the middle. They're faint, but when you move your mouse over it, they get darker. We want to click in the bottom left one. It's a square that has a mountain and a little computer in the bottom right. That means that you're grabbing that photo from your computer. When you click on it, it will open up your file manager for you, allow you to go find the picture, click on the picture, click on insert, and the picture now is in this box instead of just the box. You can change the size of the box. Sometimes you might want the photo to be bigger or smaller. By clicking on the outside of the box, on the border, whether there's a picture in there or not, you'll see some squares or circles appear in all corners and halfway along each side. You can use them to make it bigger or smaller. Now one caution though, Along the right hand side, if you grab that square halfway along and you drag it to the right so you're making the photo wider, make sure it's not family photos because we will not appreciate you making us gain 10 pounds. Okay, if you want to make it taller, then use the bottom one and then you can make us all nice and tall and skinny. That's fine. All right, to make it stay in proportion, then use the bottom right hand corner instead. I showed you a design there, an old burgundy one. To click on and change different designs, click on the Designs tab and a whole bunch will appear. As you move your mouse over top of them, the name will appear, but that's not as exciting. If you click on them, then you on the right hand side may see some variations. And it also shows you in your PowerPoint what it looks like. 
So what items should you ask your ancestor about now? What, why is it important to them? What's the history? My grandmother, who I called Nanny, had this lamp from at least 1947 until she died at age 99. My uncle remembers it in the house they moved into in that year and as he continued to grow up. The lamp was on the table in the den by the piano. All right, so you were listening to me tell the story about the lamp rather than reading it. A lot of people would appreciate that instead of having to read it. You know, they just don't like doing that. So how do you record audio to a slide? Headphones is a good idea. It allows you to um, muff out other sounds. It's clearer. Also, you might want to write a script so that you know what you're going to say ahead of time so that you're not pausing like I did just before saying that. But say it as if you're talking to somebody and that you're not reading it, if that's possible. Now your script is probably going to be one per slide, so it's not a lot that you need to stress about each time you record. You can pause in between. And the cool thing is, if you don't like it, delete it, do it again. Doesn't cost you anything, little bit of time, but the more and more you do it, the better it is. It's just practice is all it is. So to record your audio, click on the slide you want to add the audio. Click on the insert tab and on the right, you'll see um, a word audio or megaphone type. And we want to click on record audio and then type in the name that you want to call this. Then you'll see a red circle. Click on the red circle. I know red usually you don't, red means stop, but not this time. And then talk. And when you're done, click on OK or the blue square. Either one will stop the recording. The megaphone icon will appear on the slide, but you, we'll talk about hiding that so people can't see it. And you know what? If you don't like it, as I said, just delete that icon and do it again. So here's the slide, but the previous slide, you noticed you didn't see, uh, you did see it. But if I didn't want to, I would hide it during the slide, the show, because you don't want people to know. They just want them to hear it. Now, when you go to the slide in the PowerPoint, if you have multiple ones, do you want it to automatically start talking when you get there? Usually we do. So then you would make sure, um, click on the megaphone, that icon, and two other tabs appear up on the ribbon. Click on the Auto Tools Playback, and there is a Start button. Click on it and click on the drop down and select Automatic. Notice also there's play across slides. If you need the text, the items that you've just said to go over multiple slides, that's how you can do that. All right, transition from one slide to another. When you're going from one slide to another, might have been very boring because I'm speaking. That's not what we want. But in some cases, you've probably seen at uh, weddings where they have different transitions as it goes from one slide to another. Well, you can add those. Now, they're kind of fun, and sometimes we get carried away with using them all. Um, don't do that. Pick something that's consistent, that looks good. You can have it coming from different directions, but it should still be the same type of transition. Click on a slide, click on all the slides, select all the slides using control A, and then pick the transition you like. But try them out first. Which one goes with what you're talking about? And maybe you decide, you know what, no, I don't even want any. You don't need them. You don't want the transitions to take away from what you're telling. So the transitions timing, sometimes they go really fast, or they're really slow. You can change how long it takes to go from one slide to another by clicking on the duration and going up or down. Once you've done that, you can say apply to all slides. 
Now, when you advance, do you want these slides to automatically advance or do you want to click, have to click a mouse button? Well, we're going to make this into a video, so we want it to automatically go to the next slide after so many seconds. So if we click on a slide and then click on Control A, that selects all, then click on the transaction tab, transitions tab, and on the after box, decide between three and four. Now some slides may have a big family photo, lots of people, you'd want that one to last a little bit longer. But start with three and four, three or four, see which one you like. Now, PowerPoint shows, if you create this beautiful PowerPoint and you want family members to see it, you think, oh, but they have to have PowerPoint. If you save your PowerPoint as a PowerPoint show, then they do not have to have PowerPoint to be able to view the slideshow. It's so cool, it's free. So make sure you've got your transitions and uh, it all looks good and it runs beautifully. Then save it, go to file, say save. You've probably saved it a few times already, so you might need to say save as. And you're gonna save it as this time a PowerPoint show. And here's where it is on the list, it's in blue and then click on save. Now you can email that to other people and other family members. Now, old PowerPoints. Do you have wedding, um, maybe funeral or family gatherings where you've created a PowerPoint? Make it into a PowerPoint show as well. Nice and easy. And again, email it, put it on a blog, share it with the family. Now, we're gonna talk also about now, PowerPoint to MP4. An MP4 is a file that is a video file and which is necessary to upload to YouTube. The PowerPoint show will not work. It has to be an MP4, not a problem. So again, create your PowerPoint with all the photos, add the transitions, add your voice, in there as much as possible so there's not too much reading and then do the same thing save as decide where you're going to save it and this time click on the mp4 video with the file name now you're ready to upload to youtube another way that you can also create this as an mp4 is to go into the file menu export it create a video and select the mp4 notice you can also um, package it onto a cd if anybody has one of those anyway so we have family treasures we don't want to throw away but we want to document that history how are we going to do that we're going to do it through photos and voice. And the next two sections, we'll talk about creating more videos, creating a YouTube channel to upload these PowerPoints and our videos, and then share those videos with our family. If you have any questions, um, please email me, check out my blog, and hopefully, We'll see you in the chat.